Hey man, you already know what it is. It's your boy Cheeseburger from Cheeseburger Productions to Dank Daddy from the Dank TV. Who I got with me on the Dank TV today? Yo, yo, it's DC Too Smooth and we live in this motherfucker. The best motherfucking DJ in the city. You know it. Alright, alright. So, you are the official DJ for TJX6. Am I correct? Facts. All right, all right. So, brother, tell us how you got that gig, how you landed, you know, how you landed that with TJ. Yeah, honestly, it was simple as hell. Like, um, <laughs> it was just the networking. I was with somebody um, who was promoting in the city. He knew somebody who needed a DJ for an artist coming up who was getting real big, had his own way. And um, <laughs> what's crazy is I was actually the store manager at at and at the time. So, uh, I took... I, I took the go ahead, you know what I'm saying? I gave the two weeks up and I was like, yeah, I'm a dip. So first time they needed me, the first tour we went on uh, was last last fall. Yeah, a year ago. So almost a year ago, yeah. Okay. So yep. So what was it like touring with TJ? <laughs> high as hell. <laughs> That's all I can tell you, say high as hell. Every day, anytime, everywhere, niggas is rolling up. That's, yeah. that's all it was about, rolling up, smoking, you know what I'm saying? We was in the studio several times. Um, one thing I can say about TJ is I've never seen him with a with a pad in his life. A pit in the pad, ever. He freestyled everything. Ever. Everything he does, it does is freestyle. So it's coming off the top of his head. Some of the times, nigga be laughing at his own shit. Like, hold on, hold on, hold on. That shit was funny. <laughs> and have to re-record the shit, so... It's, it's definitely interesting fucking with TJ because he's on a whole different way. Nobody really touch it right now. Nobody really can touch. Niggas going to jail for it and shit. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> I know this is probably an obvious question, but what make you what what make uh, TJ stand out from other artists to you? His wave, his wave. That literally the last thing I literally just said. He's he's literally touching beats. He's touching lyrics, he's touching beats, he's touching clothes nobody else wants to touch. And he's right. making them hot. So that's definitely what you need when it comes into this music game. You need a you definitely need a wave along with the following. So that's first and foremost, that's at least me. But now <coughs> now that he's got that, he's got one of the best managers in the game. I mean, he's teaching me stuff, and I'm just a DJ and producer, so I'm running around with him, like, trying to learn everything. I got my pen and pad <laughs> take every note down possible. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, he's been in the game for a minute. Propane Media's got his own label and everything. Um, he was actually Future's first manager. Oh. So, yeah, so that says, that just says yeah, a lot of what friend. he knows. He ain't got to say nothing Especially else. Especially where we at with Atlanta, so that's big. Right, that's exactly. So, manager. You feel know, me? everybody from him. But yeah, so he know the game, so he know what he doing. And dude, when I met TJ, he was 18. Okay. So I think he was just turning 18, actually. Mm. So yeah, he's got a lot of potential. And stuff he ain't even tapped into yet, you know what I'm saying? So. You know what, I think DJs are really slept on in the game. I want you to speak on how important it is, like how important DJs are. Y'all are like the gatekeepers, you feel me? Like, y'all is connected, like, yeah. you know, yeah in the city to other DJs and that's important facts especially for an artist like that's trying to network he gotta know the DJ spin his music you feel me the you feel me so you can speak on a little bit how important the DJ is cause motherfuckers sleep it's definitely important to keep a DJ close to you definitely in your like, circle all the time I don't think niggas understand the, the importance and I'm glad you even 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 brought this up because I definitely want to speak on so, in my opinion, oh my in my gosh. opinion, are you good? I haven't even, I haven't even got started yet. Okay. <laughs> in my opinion, though, you can go ahead and tap, tap in live real quick. So, in my opinion, uh, yes, DJs are one of the most important, are supposed to be one of the most important people to artists. <clears throat> can't just I mean nowadays you you can go into TikTok and whatnot and might be able to come up with a beat that might have people on TikTok going wild that's one way now you know what I'm saying to hit that social media but you always got to be in the streets you always always got to be in the streets and if you're not if you're not paying your dues what you going to do you know what I'm saying like you know how many artists is in Atlanta like I came across probably 
in the three years that I've been DJing in Atlanta, I probably came across like four or five hundred artists. Not just being, not just them being from here, but all over. You know what I'm saying? Because we know the Atlanta's. You know what I'm saying? We know the Atlanta's, the Atlanta's vibe in terms of their culture, in terms of music. So <clears throat> everybody comes here. And the fact that one DJ is already in the city booked maybe three, four, five times. Any DJ in the week, you gotta get tapped in with somebody. Somebody. Right. You gotta get tapped in with some type of DJ, some type of producer. You gotta have somebody on your team. Because if you don't, <clears throat> it's not gonna hit the streets like that. I've seen plenty of people come up to me and tell me, oh, you don't know who I am, like, and all that extra, like, oh, my what? dude. <laughs> There's been clubs where I DJ about two, three years, and you're going to tell me you don't know who I am. No, I don't know who you are, but you should know who I am because you're in my club right now. Right. And you And I'm spending to my customers. You know what I'm saying? Customers I've been known who've been coming back, who've been pop-up beer, who've been popping bottles, who've been throwing money on these dancers that I know, that I'm close with. So the fact is, if you want your song being played in the club, you need to spend some money. It right. need to be somewhere. It can be on me. It can be on these dancers. Go and get some ones. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It can be at the bar. If you don't like the dancers in the club, throw the ones at the bar. Do something. Spend some you money. know what I'm saying? Because that's how I'm going to make my money. Is the fact that, you know what I'm saying? So, so the I really DJs like, make their money through people coming in and spending money. Right. Those, okay. are the, those are supposed to be the DJ's plays. No cap. But sometimes, you know what I'm saying, promoters be getting into they little, you know, tapping into a little something, something, you know. Yep. You know what be going on. What's good, y'all? What's good? What's good? Hey, hey. But yeah, you know what be going on with the yeah. promoters and whatnot. They try to make their own place too, but when it comes to music in the club, like, you want your shit played, spend some money. I don't care how you spend it. You spend it at the bar, you pop a bottle, you spend it on, you spend it on some ones, on some dances, or you just pay my fee, mm -hmm. you know? Because one thing is, is that we can't hear the shit in the club. You know what I'm saying? We can't listen to it before we get on. We're already here. Right. It'd be one thing if somebody hit my DMs like, yo, I want you to check this song out. Yeah, check my email out and check out the song, see if it's out. What you, what you want to do? You know what I'm saying? If I think the song is out, okay, what you want to do? What you trying to get into? Because money going to need to be spent somewhere. Right. You feel me? So that's how I look at it with that. But... DJs are very, very important. We're not going to go into detail about all the extra in the clubs, but if, if the DJ is booked about three, four times a week, at least, you need to be spending something on him so he can get right. You feel me? But you also got to have a DJ who is interested in your music at the same time. You can't just get a DJ and be like, okay, it's 300, 400 to spend this shit monthly, and he don't really fuck with your shit. Right. He's got to actually believe in so if the nigga don't, ain't trying to listen to your shit first before he talk about money, then he ain't really talking about shit. He just want to check. Right. Okay. So where you from? Originally from the DMV. Shout out to the DMV. Okay, big shout out to the DMV. <laughs> you know the vibes. I ain't yo, what's crazy is on Saturday, some DC folks came in the club asking me for some go-go music. I was like, oh my God, I'm talking about rolling my eyes and all. It's been about 10, 11 years since we heard some go-go music, man. We got to move on from that. But, <laughs> you know, I had to play it. I had to give me some TCB and CCB in there. Like I said, shout out to the DMV. I still fuck with y'all. Okay, okay. So how you go about marketing yourself um, as a DJ? Because I know you in a club, but do you do something special on the social media? How you do it different from other DJs? That's actually something I'm learning to do. I'm not really like a live type of person. Yeah, so me either. Things like this, I have to get into definitely. I got some content I wanna, um, I wanna get into. I'm not gonna say anything extra, but we are definitely gotta talk after this. But okay, okay. Yeah, there's some things I wanna get into in terms of content. I got some new content coming up soon, so make sure y'all stay tuned. So, but what I do wanna do, what I will tell you about, I got some videos coming up that. Uh, Gonna show content of me actually mixing and transitioning and scratching and doing all of that, you know what I'm saying, inside a club vibe area. So I'll be getting into that soon, so that'll be promoted real quick. I'm just waiting on uh, a couple things that I've paid for, so I'm just waiting on that. And then, uh, yeah, probably like one and a half, two weeks, it'll be coming up. 
So that's how I'm gonna start, but that's the only thing I'm gonna get into with that. There's some other things I'm gonna tap into, but I can't speak on it yet. It's real, yeah, it's real secret. Okay, okay. So what was life like growing up in the DMV? Was it rough? Did you have a bag? Was it a, a was it grimy coming up? Was it a little struggle? I seen some shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I seen some shit. Yeah. Um, it's not of us. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't. You the really, baby? Nah, I'm the second to last. Okay. Yeah, I'm the second to last. So my parents. What's crazy is both of my parents still married. You know what I'm saying? They've been married. Fifty. Fifty one. So you had a decent upbringing, yeah, both parents. Yeah, I had both parents. Even but if it was rough, I feel like both parents in the crib is enough. Yeah, it, it, it is, it is, you know, but at the same time, by the time that they had me, by the time they had me, they was a lot older. So mm -hmm. they was like in their 40s, going on their 50s. Yeah, my dad just had a birthday, shout out to them, September 1. Everybody's yeah, birthday is in September, so. Um, yeah, so it was a little, it was, it was a little bit different. It was, it was some things I wanted to get into, and I wish I had got into early age that I'm now getting into now that has to do with this industry that I didn't get to touch when I was younger. Or I had to hide, like trying to play the Alicia Keys on the piano, but couldn't play it too loud because I know they was hearing me. Yeah. I couldn't buy the actual CD because my parents were preachers, so I'm a PK kid. By the way, shout out to the PK kids. Yeah. All right, so. But I was into music, but it was just gospel music. But I knew there was some music by Jamie Foxx, Bobby Valentino, like folks like, you know what I'm saying, like Marvin Gaye now. We did have a CD of Marvin Gaye, so I was able to, you know what I'm saying, touch the little hand on the piano, but yeah. I, I couldn't buy none of them CDs. Usher, when we got into the 2000s, when I was actually, you know what I'm saying, growing up, yeah, I couldn't get into that shit, bro. So I had to sneak it on the radio, so when the radio would come on, I would get on my piano and I hear these keys coming on. I would try to figure it out so quick. You know what I'm saying? Because radio ain't going to play it once. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like I got to figure it out every time it come on. So it was hard, but it's crazy. I, I I actually worked hard enough every time I heard it on the radio. I ended up learning how to how to play the song, several songs from the Keys. You know what I'm saying? Just off, Here, learning yeah. by ear. So. Yeah. Anyways, doing all of that as a kid, when I was growing up, things I would get mad at, I would go to my room, lock my door, play the piano, like just be learning shit off the radio. So little Bow Wow, all they little, you know what I'm saying, all they little songs and shit. So that's what I was doing as a kid. If I wasn't doing that, I was playing football. Older I got, you know what I'm saying, yeah, I done seen some shit, I done got into some shit, my fault. <laughs> but, oh shit, let me do that real quick. I felt like, I don't know, I felt like what life was like as a kid that wasn't for me. And I didn't really see that shit until I got in college. So, <coughs> mind you, I didn't even start DJing until I got in college. Okay. So, it was strictly just piano, bass, guitar. I was running track. I was playing football, playing basketball. I wasn't doing shit else for sports and gospel music. Okay. So, um, once I got to college and got in my own, you know what I'm saying, my own life, I started learning different things. You know what I'm saying? I picked up DJ and all virtual DJ. Shout out to AJ. I hate him for putting me on virtual DJ, but you know what? It is a starter kit for for niggas that they trying to get on. It is a starter kit. So, but I started off virtual DJ. Then you know I had a uh, had someone introduce me to Serato. Okay. I moved from that to. DJing in the dorms, that little kickbacks to DJ for the Sigma High, uh, for the Sigmas in Fort Valley State, to doing house parties all over Fort Valley. Then my boy Tez, shout out to Tez and the A and B group. Tez had heard about me DJing all over these house parties, getting these house parties stick, and not the club swamp. We had a club called the Swamp in Fort Valley, so the Swamp was crazy, wild, ratchet, fun. It was that type of vibe. So he heard about me and ended up trying to put me on Thursdays there. So I was kind of hyped about it because I was going to the swamp. It was fun to go to the swamp all the time. So I ended up, you know what I'm saying, DJing there. That was my first gig ever in the swamp at Fort Valley State. Like that shit. Yeah. Me and, me and DJ PK had that gig. Like, boy, me and my friends were so lit, bro. That was my first, first gig. So 
after that, you know, I stayed there for a couple years, you know what I'm saying, got up, um, and then moved back to the city, moved back to Atlanta, um, tried to meet up. My first, the first DJ I met out here was DJ P for real, that's still Uzi DJ, you know, and one thing he told me when I first, like, when I first got this shit, he was like, um, you know, I was actually opening for him, for a promoter, and he came in the close, he was like, yo, how long you been DJing? Like man, like like a year, maybe eight months. Years. Damn, bro, you pretty straight, bro. Keep working. But see, he, I was hyped about what he was saying. He wasn't a little Uzi DJ at the time, but I was hyped about what he was saying because he was already in the city. But when he got on, boy, when he got on, I sat there and listened to him for a few minutes, boy. That scratching was real. I was like, oh yeah, I gotta up my game. Mm. Atlanta ain't playing. <laughs> Atlanta ain't playing right. with no DJs out here, nigga. So. Uh, so yeah, man, that's how it started. I came up, I came up through the city, came up through AUC, um, Clark Atlanta doing phones just died. Came, in, <laughs> came, um, came up through Clark Atlanta, and and uh, and did all the college parties, uh, Clark Atlanta, Spelman, Morehouse, and uh, yeah, and went from there. But. <coughs> Yeah, that's how that's how I got brought up from you know what I'm saying from the DMV to the music life moving to Atlanta at 16. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. So when you be DJing, do you like to be off that drink or that gas? You know, when I first started, I didn't like to smoke in the club. Like I didn't like to smoke. Period. Like I only like smoking in my in my house. Like in my house and with somebody. So that changed a lot. I can smoke in the club now. Like it used to be because when I smoke, I just get so good in terms of my set. Not just like in terms of me, it's just in terms of my set. I don't play nothing for the bitches. Like it's nothing but hood shit going on. Like we rock. <laughs> That's how it used to be. And I realized I was like, nah, I can't do it no more. So I don't know what that was, but I don't know what that campaign was or why I was doing that, but I started smoking more, you know what I'm saying, and it, it got easier for me, but I like, it's, it's probably half and half, I would, I need a shot when I get in the club, and you know what I'm saying, and probably a Coke, a Remy and a Coke, Penny and Coke, um, Jack Daniels and Coke, Crown, Coke, Cranberry, whatever, but you know what, Remy and Apple, Remy and Orange Juice, Remy and Orange Juice, my best friend put me on that shit, Remy and Orange Juice. God. That's the <laughs> that's the shit. But yeah, I like the smoking. I'm not gonna lie. It's, you know, it's a lot. Yeah. I feel like if I'm on the same vibe that everybody else on, how can I not, you know what I'm saying? How can I not get the song selection on? Now I just gotta get technical. Song selection is, you know what I'm saying, just a lot. Once you get technical, that's when you become a DJ. So Anybody can select songs and land. We got playlists for days. <laughs> when you get technical, you can become a DJ. Okay, okay. So, so what is your sign? I'm a Taurus. I'm a Taurus. <laughs> Tell us one good thing and one bad thing about Taurus. Easy now. I'm a Taurus too. Man. <laughs> Easy. Trade lightly. One thing about Taurus is, man, they probably, like, they probably the most laid back people. They probably the most laid back people you can fuck with. Like they don't they don't be about shit but but what they love. That's it. Like if a certain person loves this, then that's what they be on. Don't be on no other extra shit, all that lame shit. But one bad thing about a tourist is like once you piss them off, bro, like once you cross them, bro, it's just yeah. <laughs> it's literally like, like you know, know when the bullet you wave <laughs> that red flag. Right, it's like, yeah, it's like, yo, are you testing me right now? Like, what the like, hell? What kind of bullshit you on? This nigga testing, testing my intelligence. Yeah. You feel it's, me? Like, he on some bullshit. It's definitely demon time. Yeah. Definitely yeah. Time. Once, once you cross the tourists, it's, yeah. yeah. Once you put that red flag out, it's... Yeah, it's over. <laughs> So you like to wear the finest clothes, you gotta have good material on your my career. I'm not gonna lie, Taurus, they are, you know what I'm saying, materialistic, but my thing is, like, I just like to look good. You know what I'm saying? It's not really about what it is, it's about how it looks. So, yeah. 
So that's me. Don't get me wrong, you know what I'm saying? I do like, you know what I'm saying, a couple flash of things. But, you know, it ain't too, too much. It's something niggas can handle. Niggas ain't wearing no big ass. Yeah, like, nah, that's wild. You yeah. gotta be fly with me. But at the same time, I'm from the DMV, so you know on top, you got we the flyest when it comes to the fall winter season. You feel me? Like best jackets, all of that. <laughs> so Oh, <laughs> Tim's, ACG boots, foams, Air Maxes, nigga, we come through with the new balances. We gonna get the fuck, nigga, we gonna look fly in that shit. No cap. Dripping, drowning. <laughs> so when you shop, how much do you spend when you usually shop? On a, you feel, when you feel like you gotta bless yourself, how much? Man, I'm, I'm gonna tell you because I don't shop often because when I shop, it's a lot. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, I don't like. I know, like yeah, like, it's like, like I can't go to the store, store but I'm almost in that bag. Yeah, right? it be it be several times where I gotta like, where I gotta like, all right, let me go pick up a shirt I want to get, or let me go find a fly ass jacket, something to already compliment something I already have or something I already bought. But sometimes I do have to do that, but nah, not often. You know what I'm saying? I might have to go and get a shirt or two. But, or three y'all. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. But when 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 I say I'm, I'm finna shop, I'm finna like actually spend at least five hundred. Like last plus. Last time. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Cause, Cause you know that shit be adding up and racking up. We do. I think the last time was about like overall. We went for like a week. We went shopping. For that whole week was a week just been shopping. We had to. It's like when you book. When you book five, six, seven times. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You can't just go out with the same shit all the time. I'm trying to tell you. Like, like, like people go end up. Like, you got to like, like, right, right, exactly. Like, I'm not going to lie now. Sometimes I might come through with the gray sweats, but at least my shoes going to be fly. Right. I still have my earrings in. I'm going to still have all of them. Still be clean. Still be smelling clean. Always got to smell clean. Come on, preach. Smell me. Anyway, yeah, right, always got to smell to me. That's first and foremost. But yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely, I'm definitely a shopper. But, you know. So how much do you like to eat? Can you tell us, like, what are your favorite places to eat at? I know, I know, I know you got to, you love to eat, brother. Alright. <laughs> All right, so. Alright, so it's a whole, it's a whole interview, interview by itself. Well, I'm about to say, because we can make this a whole segment by itself. We can talk about some fucking right, food. Alright, oh, first man. and foremost, I'm a pasta man. So my parents used to always like tell me they thought I was Italian, like they didn't know what the hell was going on. But yeah. pasta is easy. Point blank here. Alright, first and foremost, Mr. Everything, the number one, number one. That chicken, chicken healthy, healthy choice, bro, I'm trying to tell you, you gotta copy one. Gotta copy one. I don't, I don't know if they have any outside of uh, outside of Georgia, but they, they got, got one in the city uh, by the AC. They, they got, got one by me uh, close to Union City on the south side. Um, I, think I, think I think it's all over that, but yeah, yeah, I door dash that, that shit. I can go pick it up. I can go online and get that shit. shit. Mm -hmm. like, it don't matter. Just it's everything. Lemonade, lemonade, pasta, lemonade. Um, what else? Uh, Southside South wings, we busting. I've been getting them in a couple years. Yeah. yeah. Um, and mind you, I'm strictly just talking about the Southside right now. I'm not even getting to like, I'm not even getting to part. the city. Like, I'm not even like, hell no. Nah. Like, Southside wings, tropical cuisine. Um, I fuck with this Japanese steakhouse on the North Side. Hmm. I haven't been there in a minute. You fuck with Waffle House out here? Huh? You fuck with Waffle House? Yeah, especially after I'm drunk. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the place to go to after the club. Yeah, no cap. Hey, no cap. Because sometimes I be getting home like 6, 6 30. So, like, I be missing everything because at the after hour, like, I be trying to catch the afterway. Waffle House, all on that. Both they shit be fucking shut down. You got break over there. You got a Central Station over there. You got a little club over there. Yeah. So after that, like, the whole Waffle House, I can tell I'm trying to look away from that shit. Right. Yeah, Waffle House is definitely on the top. You know what I'm saying? I would say, I would say top 10. Top 10. Top 10. 
but the Japanese steakhouse is called Fubi. Fubi? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Benihana's. You like Olive Garden? No. I was, I was just, just talking, talking about, about that. Olive Man. Hey, hey. you know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> Olive Garden is for white people, bro. I'm talking about no type of seasoning. Like, nah, like, I can't even, I can't even get with it. Like, I fuck with Big Daddy's when it's fresh. You know what I'm saying? It's a soul food place. Um, what's that daiquiri? Uh, the daiquiri. I fuck with, I fuck with Lady New Orleans. Uh, pasta over there. They got a New Orleans joint. Um, I don't take away some uh, Caribbean spot. Like, yeah, I can't. I can't even fuck with Now, Robbins, that's closer Italian. I can fuck with Robbins. Oh, Cheddar's. You know what I'm saying? I can fuck Cheddar's. Cheddar's. No, we can do this all, bro. I can tell you, like, put me on game. I'm going to go all the things you mentioned. I'm going to go all the things you mentioned. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. You say that. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So what do you got to say to your supporters and everybody that love what you do? Man, first and foremost, I appreciate everybody that's still around me. You know what I'm saying? See, when I, when, when I'm looking to be in the club, I want people to think of me as just one word. You know what I'm saying? Versus mm. You know what I'm saying? You party with me and me, we not booked to just play trap music. Right. You know what I mean? I'm booked to be able to take you all around the world. Tell us where we can find you out on all your social media platforms, everything like that. Yes. Everything is DC2 School. You know what I'm saying? Everything is DC number two. Yes. I do have a side business that I do. Like, I, I sell cases, phone uh, cases. So, okay. you have a D1, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to have some merch actually for you too. So, that's a little, you know what I'm saying? 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 Right. But, um, yeah. Uh, DC2 School on everything, um, Twitter, Instagram, uh, I'm going to have a website, it's actually going to be DC2School, it's actually taken, but it's not, uh, we're working on a couple things before I actually, uh, bring it out, so, waiting on my logo, my logo's coming soon, you know what I'm saying, I'm talking about that, shout out to Guy ATL, on my logo, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, yeah, I'm just going to be working on that, you know what I'm saying, I'm just going to be working on that, you know what I'm saying, yeah, yeah, man, we got a lot, lot of things coming up. You know, I just want everybody to stay tuned. Everything's going to be posted on Instagram first, and it's going to move to Twitter and all that. I have a SoundCloud. SoundCloud's over 2 million listeners. I have a big cloud. I have Apple Music. Y'all got to follow up on that. That's still easy to do. I have playlists. 90s, 2000s playlists. You know what I'm saying? All the best, the best. And these are just playlists that, you know what I'm saying, I like. You can hear the type of vibes that you know what I'm saying. Type of person, you know what I'm saying. Type of person, everything else, you know what I'm saying. You might not see everything else that I play in the club, but I think that's one of one of the things that I'm gonna do. Like some of these songs, if you ask for it, they don't know. I'm gonna just add it to the playlist as long as they don't have it. So, so. Man, we're gonna wrap it up, man. It's your boy Cheeseburger from Cheeseburger Productions. We thank Fatty from the Thank TV. Who I got with me again today, brother? Live, live, stay tuned, man. Follow all social media. We out, we out. Dang, gang.